I want to welcome everybody, Academy members, to this webinar. We're going to talk about tools to assist with HIPAA risk assessments. Joining me today and providing most of the content will be Janet Reed, PPSI's Director of Security Compliance Services. Janet has worked with hundreds of practices over a number of years and is a subject matter expert. So our goal is to help inform. We're not trying to sell products or services. We're trying to help those of you who, like most practices, are somewhere in the stage of trying to improve the quality of security coverage in the practice. What are some tools that are available to help? So we'll talk about HIPAA's place briefly in IT security, the security rule, some tools to assist with risk assessment. We'll talk about preparing for an audit, some of the tools that you'll want and uh, information that might be helpful. And a very briefly look at network security behind the scenes. So some of you have been PBSI clients for years and years, and thank you very much for your long-term support. For many of you, this may be your first exposure to PBSI, so thanks for your attendance. We are a provider of healthcare technology services and have been for many, many years and serve the Academy as well as many Academy members. So it's out of partnership with the Academy today that we're offering this free educational service to help Academy members uh, improve in operations areas in the practice. So why do we need protection? Those of you who are attending are the, quote, smart ones. You know we need protection. You know that patient information is important. We have an obligation in healthcare to protect it. And the financial health of the practice is at risk unless we minimize the risk of data breaches and we uh, are at risk for audit penalties. So both protecting the security itself, improving our security, and being able to document or outside audits are both really important issues. So today our main goal will be HIPAA compliance and associated topics. So leading that discussion is Janet Reed our Director of Security Compliance Services. So I want to introduce Janet and Janet, take over. Okay, sorry about that. Just want to get my screen so I can share that with you. Can you see my screen? Hello? Not yet. There we go. That was my issue, Janet. My apologies. Okay. There you go. Okay. Good afternoon. Thanks for attending. So today I'm going to talk about the HIPAA security rule, the security risk assessment, and preparing for an audit. And responses from your the questions on your registrations, I see some of you are looking for information on updating some security policies, others that need assurance with compliance. Um, just the fact that you've chosen to listen today shows that you're paying attention to the security of your patient data. So my hope today is to help you um, with the understanding the importance of completing and implementing the security rule. The security rule was written to protect the data in an electronic format. It's been 21 years since HIPAA was introduced, and additional policies have been added along the way to reflect the changes to the way that we now store and share our patient data. In 2003, the privacy rule was released. This rule would govern who and how much information we shared. Remember, this is the minimum necessary rule, and the privacy rule told us to safeguard our data, but it didn't really tell us how. So in 2005, the security rule gave us the guidelines to help us with the added responsibility of safeguarding our electronic data. So all electronic PHI that's created, that's received, maintained, or transmitted by a covered entity is subject to the security rule. So some of the some of the people refer to the security rule as the CIA of electronic PHI because it will cover confidentiality, integrity, and availability. The security rule includes three groups of safeguards. They're administrative, physical, and technical, and over half of them are administrative. 
the security rule takes into consideration that the rules have to apply to all size facilities from big hospitals to solo practitioners. With that in consideration, the rules are specified as either required or addressable. Required meaning that you must have the stated policy and it must be implemented. Some examples of required safeguards would be unique passwords, disaster plan recoveries, business associate agreements, training and audit logs. Other rules are addressable. Now addressable doesn't mean that it's optional. This does not mean you can skip the addressable rule. It means it's flexible. You can modify the addressable policies to fit your practice as long as you justify why you needed to modify the rule. Addressable rules would be encryption of data stored on a device or an employee log off policy or a, um, password management. We have to create a culture of compliance and to do that we need to create policies and procedures to safeguard our data. We're required to train our employees on these policies and procedures. Employees need to understand that the policies and understand there are penalties for not following the rules to safeguard the data. A little bit of trivia on HIPAA. HIPAA is administered by our U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, has civil enforcement by the Office for Civil Rights, and criminal enforcement by the Department of Justice. I've included a link for some reading material on the security rule. You can also just Google security rule 101 and that'll give you some information on the security rule. The security risk analysis, it's made up of two parts. There's a risk assessment, and then there's a security of IT infrastructure assessment. The most important requirement of the security rule is to complete the security risk assessment. The risk assessment's gonna give us guidelines to find risk and vulnerability in our security and day-to-day -day procedures. In essence, it's a list of questions that help us to assess where we are vulnerable. If you participated in meaningful use or plan to participate in MIPS, the number one core objective was, and it still is, to complete the risk assessment. And if you passed meaningful use, then you attested to the completion of the security risk assessment. Our goal is to produce a detailed report to close any compliance gaps. The security rule also states that you must secure your IT infrastructure. You are required to have monitoring in place to make sure you safeguard the integrity of your data. So are your software patches being updated on everybody's computer? Do you have an antivirus that's up to date? Are your computers scanned for viruses? So who's watching out for all of this? There are resources available to help you with that. What are the steps for completing the risk assessment? You start by taking an inventory of all the devices where electronic PHI is stored or has the potential to be stored. And it's always a good idea to have an updated list of equipment with the make and model and serial numbers. What if you had to report theft or fire? You need this information. Some examples of where PHI could be found would be, of course, in your server, any backups, laptops, tablets, anybody bringing devices from home and using them, your desktop PCs, dictaphones, copiers, anybody text messaging with their cell phones, um, and of course in your software, your EHR, EHR software, does it store any patient data? Um, it, do you have data on a, a Word file or Excel? And of course, is somebody emailing with that type of information? And then we're going to examine the people and processes that have access to the PHI. So then that's when you're going to get out your policy and procedure manual. You'll be asked to confirm that you have required policies and procedures in place. The security rule will give you the guidelines of what policies you need to have in place. And you will find that you'll need to write and address many procedures that most likely are not currently happening at your office. Steps that will assure you that the data stays safe, that you keep keeps you from a um, a PHI breach. So we're focused on a goal of creating a culture of compliance. So make that the theme of your office. Then look at the technology. Who's remoting in? What is encrypted or should be? Who's using your wireless access? Who's text messaging? You probably need to contact your IT support team to help you with this section of the security risk assessment. Then after you've done your research and gathered all the informa necessary information, you need to document, you need to train, and you need to implement the policies. 
what's the best plan for you? There's not a given format or a tool that's required to be used for the risk assessment, but there's many out there. What is required is that you address all the safeguards set for the security rule. So you can always try it yourself. There are downloadable tools available. You'll need to engage with your IT company because there'll be questions asked that you typically would not know the answer to. So do your research, understand the questions so you give the right answer. You might decide to get some outs outside help. So let me show you an example of one of the tools that we use here at PBSI. So our security risk assessment is the tool that's recommended by ONC and we customize this for our customers. We start by taking an inventory, listing all the devices, software, or processes that hold or have potential to hold electronic PHI. And then we'll go through a series of questions based on the security rule to address policies and procedures that need to be in place. There's no wrong answers, and auditors do not expect you to answer address to all the policies. Then we'll look at the people in process that handle the electronic PHI. So we give you an example of a vulnerability threat and an example of a procedure or process that needs to be in effect. That would be here. And then you'll answer with what procedure or process currently is, it is and how effective it is. And we'll do the same process that we did here for technology. And after completing that, we'll end up with a list of action items that still need to be addressed. And we'll, it'll find out how many high risks and how many medium risks that we actually have. So this will be your starting point of what needs to be corrected in your office. We can also assist you with a security policy and procedure template. We start with a 97-page manual with policies and procedures required by HIPAA. I just wanted to roll this down so you can see the table of contents. So the procedures are required by HIPAA, the privacy rule, and the security rule. So it's modified to fit your, your particular practice, including all the necessary forms and logs for compliance. So there is benefits of having a professional help you with the security risk assessment and your policy and procedure manual. So we do the research and the documentation for you. It always helps to get a set of fresh eyes to look over how you're securing your data, how your staff is handling the data you've entrusted them with, we know you're busy, this job takes some time and resources to complete, so reduce your risk, improve your quality of your procedures, let the professional be the fall guy to help you get the employees, the employees to follow the rules. I've learned over the 18 years being out in the field that it is much easier coming from an outsider to get employees to follow rules. If you've attested to meaningful use, please make sure you have the risk assessment in place. I've helped clients through many audits who do not want to tell the doctors that you failed the audit and the money you've already spent is going to be taken back. Are you ready for your audit? So it's not a, it's a matter of, it's not a matter of when or will you be audited, it's a matter of when you'll be audited. And I just read a, um, an article the other day that said one out of five providers that attested for meaningful use will be audited. Most audits give you 10 days to respond with a request for documents to be uploaded. And clients that I've worked with for meaningful use audits were able to upload um, with, with uh, not much issue. Meaningful use auditors will request your computerized gener generated meaningful use report. Um, you'll need to show the numerator and the denominator for the attested measures. You'll also be requested to supply information on any measures that you took exclusions for. We haven't had a client that has failed yet. Remember, no risk assessment means a failed audit. 
they will definitely want security risk assessment to be dated and reviewed within your attestation period, and MIPS will be the same. Remember, your, your security risk assessment is ongoing. In 2017, the OCR received an added $4 million to their $43 million budget. This additional $4 million will be used for the audit program. It is time to start paying attention to all the roles. In 2016, all OCR audits were desk audits, but plans for 2017 are to be on-site audits as well. And most audits start with this pre-screening questionnaire, then a list of requested documents to be uploaded. They'll ask for things such as your policy and procedure manual, your business associate agreements, and your security risk assessment. And if the OCR sees like compl any compliance issues, they have the authority to conduct a further investigation. So you want to prepare in advance. Make sure you have your security risk assessment. Again, without it, it's an automatic fail. You need breach notification logs and investigation action documentation. Employee HIPAA training logs. Training's ongoing at least once a year at minimum. Don't let your employees tell an auditor, oh, I didn't know that. Employee sanction policy signed for each employee or a volunteer or temporary employees. Do your employees know that there are fines and penalties if they do not follow the rules? Policy and procedures manuals covering all aspects of the HIPAA privacy and security rules. Your security risk assessment is your guide to the needed policies. And on-site auditors, they want to talk to your staff. Here's a few examples of logs that we have in place, um, that we've put in place with some of our clients, and you should be using something like this as well. The auditors will ask for a log of employee training. They want to know what the training program was, what the dates are, and they want the employee name, and they want the employee to sign off that they did receive that training. And again, your, your security risk assessment, you should have an action log. We saw that last page of the, of the assessment that I took you through. So we're going to have to have a description. They want to know who did you assign it to, what action was taken. You need to set a priority level to it and give it a due date. And then a privacy officer incident log. Do your employees know how to or who to report a privacy incident to? You need to have that in place. And how do you avoid the red flags? Document your progress. Again, the security risk assessments, it's ongoing, always updating. They want you to update it for every attestation period. Make sure that you have that HIPAA security log and document what you found lacking upon initial assessment. And update your employee forms and have an employee training program. Make sure that you have breach logs. Does the staff know how and who to report that privacy incident to? Have them make entries, and they can be handwritten. If an auditor sees that your staff reported violation, it's, it's a good thing. They're paying attention. And then document what correct, corrective action did you take after each violation, or what conversations were had, any e emails or meetings, how responsively did you correct, communicate, and update those policies. Secure all EPHI. This is the single most important item. Once you learn, you must address. Encrypted data is excluded from breach. So if it was me, I believe I'd have Bitdefender on every laptop. Hard passwords are good passwords. Laptop encryption, wireless security, firewall rules, monitored antivirus. Security has to be a part of your culture. You must be able to prove it. I just wanted to share one more thing with you. Recently, I received this email from OCR about a claim for a breach. Um, and I want to just read you some of the verbiage from the email. So uh, Metro Community Provider Network will pay $400,000 for the lack of security management process to safeguard electronic protected health information. They were found to be noncompliant. So in January of 2012, MCPN filed a breach report with OCR because a hacker had accessed employees' email accounts and obtained 3,200 uh, patient records. And this was done through a phishing incident. So that meant that the employees 
opened up an email, clicked on something that they should not have clicked on. Maybe it looked familiar and they thought that it, that it was from someone that they knew, but it allowed the hackers to access their computers. They failed to conduct a risk analysis until mid-February 2012. That was a little bit too late. And they were, the investigation found that they had not impl implemented, implemented any corresponding risk management plans to address the risk and vulnerabilities identified in a risk analysis. Well, remember that any breach with 500 or more patient records has to be reported within 60 days to OCR. And we'll post that information on the OCR breach portal. They call that the wall of shame. And so you can you can see this is one that I clipped out back from um, from March and April, and a little bit hard to read, but you can tell that they'll tell you the type of breach and the location um, of the breach information. So here you can see there's a lot of hacking going on: emails, laptops, networks, servers, and then theft also. Um, unauthorized access or disclosure. Here's for electronic medical record and an email, paper films. So you don't want to become part of the wall of shame. So what does the HIPAA auditor want to know from you that you understand HIPAA requirements, that you that your entire staff understands the HIPAA requirements and the behavior is occurring that reflects that understanding that you've secured all electronic PHI and then you're actively working on a plan and making regular progress. Evidence to show that your words are matched by your history and that didn't start when that auditor contacted you. And can you document your progress with no verbal communication? You need to have documented logs to show compliance. So thank you for your attention. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to hear from you. My email is janetr at pbsinet.com, and I'm going to turn it back over to Ray. Thank you, Janet, very much. Uh, we will, uh, when we're finished, allow questions. So if you have questions for Janet, you are welcome to ask. So. Uh, we're doing many of these webinars for the Academy. And in those webinars, we offer information about how you can improve the tools associated with managing your risk and finding out more details. I'm not going to go into a demonstration about that today because there are other short webinars that relate to this content that are available through the Academy for free. So uh, just know that if you feel like you'd like some help with risk assessments, we're available to do that. Uh, we provide discounts for Academy members. And uh, some of the background that's permitted that, uh, Janet and other staff at PBSI have been working with practices in the greater Cincinnati area and Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana for years and years with EHR implementations and meaningful use. And so the security risk assessment and the issues associated with security risk are uh, very familiar, and uh, no one should feel criticized by the fact that you feel like this is an area in which you need some help. That is the very, very common status we find clients in. So our goal is to help. Hope, hopefully today's information has been useful. Our intent has been to educate, if you'd like, information about security services, including risk analysis assistance, and assistance with policies and procedures, feel free to contact us. When you log off the webinar, you'll get a short email with uh, questions where you can request follow-up. But with this, um, once again, I want to thank the Academy for sponsoring this series, and I want to thank all of you for your support of the Academy. Uh, we are finished today. hope everyone has a good